And just so that you guys know what we're going to do in day two, uh, a couple things. One of them is going to be we're, we're going to type things into our calculator and see what comes out. Then the other part is finding the inverses of these. And then the third part is going to be some graphing. Okay? Just so that you guys know. So there's three parts to what we're going to do today uh, where we have to figure it out with the calculator, finding and using some inverse properties, and then also graphing. So the first thing that we have is they're going to give you something like this. So it's going to say log of 3. And they want you to tell me what it equals. So if you remember from last week, on Friday, I had you guys find the L, the E button. Okay, where's the log button? On the left side, right above the E, right? So there's log, and then there's LN. Those are the two buttons that you're going to use today. And all we're going to have you do, if you notice on the screen right now where it says log three, when there is no base number written, it's understood to be base ten. So this is base 10, which means calculator is fair game. So you just type in log 3, and then it will ask you to round to three decimal places. So what did you get? Four seven seven. What do you think? You don't, because the calculator is already as base 10. Okay, what's the ln of point 0.3? Yep, the ln of point 0.3. Negative 1.20 what? Three. Four. 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 Okay. If you're rounding three decimal places. It will tell you in the directions which ones to round to. Okay. What do you think? Fairly simple? That's it for the first part. Three. I just went through them. Okay. Again, for this particular part, this is all you're doing. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right. Now, the next piece, we're going to be using some inverse properties and inverses. And here's what it says. If you have g of f of x. Okay, hold on. I better back that up. Actually, Let me back that up. If I have the log function of g of x equals log base bx, that is the inverse of f of x b to the x. Those two pieces are inverses of each other. So think about what we did on Friday where we talked about rewriting it from one version to the next. Right? Remember half or a third of your assignment was just writing it from one, or two thirds of it was writing it from one to the next? So for this particular part, they are inverses of each other, which means this. If I were to go <clears throat> g of f of x, remember that's that composition of stuff, meaning I'm going to put the f machine into the g machine. What ends up happening is I have log base b, b raised to the x power. What I want you to pay special attention to is the fact that b matches, right? Did the b's match? Okay, they're both bases. If the bases are the same, I told you on Friday, then the exponent should be the same, correct? Not what we did for the third part of the assignment you guys just turned in? So if the bases are the same, these two pieces are the same, then the exponent should be the same, so my answer should be equal to x, whatever that x happens to be. And if I go the other route with it, if I say f g of x, 
then I'm going to say b log b x. Again, if the bases are the same, then the exponent should be the same. So what should be my, what should it equal? If these two numbers are the same, what do you think it's going to equal? If the two b's match, what do you think it's going to equal? X. X. Good job. Okay. So you're going to have a couple problems that look like this. It's going to say log base or 10 log 4. And it's going to ask you to simplify this. What base is understood on the log if there isn't one written there? 10. So if the bases match, if this is a 10, if these two numbers match, then what number does it equal? 4. Good. If I were to have it as 7, log 7x, seven do the bases match? So what should it equal? Okay. Do the bases match right now? I got log base 5, 25 to the x. Are 5 and 25 the same number? No. Could they be? Yes. What's 25 rewritten as 5 to a power? 5 squared. But it already has an x up there, so what do I put? Do I just put 2 or do I put 2x? Good. Now are the bases the same? Do these numbers match? Yeah. If they do, what's it going to be equal to? 2x. It's basically like saying this. If the bases match, they cancel each other out and leave you with whatever is left behind when you hack them out. Okay? When you cross them out. What's left behind? What do you think? All right, that's part of the second part. Then the next piece that you have to do, same kind of concept. It's going to say f of x equals 6 to the x, and it's going to ask you to find the inverse. Last chapter, we dealt with inverses. Do you remember that process where we took and switch the x's and y's around. And then we solve for y. This is the same process that we have to do here. So if I do that, let's pretend that this is y equals 6 to the x. And if you remember what I did when we had that section, remember how I took the f of x out and replaced it with y equals? That was my first step. And then my second step was switch the x and y. If I switch the x and y, I have this. Now, if they're in exponential form like they are, in order to get them into inverse form, you have to put it in log form. Okay? If it's in log form, then you need to rewrite it as exponential form. That's the inverse part of it. So is it in exponential or is it in log form right now? It's in exponential. If I rewrite this as a log, like I did for the first part of your assignment on Friday, what would it be? Log, and what's the base? Six. What was it equal to? X equals, what was the exponent? Y. Did you solve for y then? Yes. That is the inverse when it's in exponential form. When it's like this, where it has y equals the ln of x plus 3, 
Now it's in log form. LN, by the way, stands for natural log, or the log of the natural number. Which number was the natural number? I gave it to you last week. Huh? Not 10. That's the base when it's not understood. It's a letter. E. E. E is the natural number. So what this is is that we're taking the log of the natural number. That's what ln stands for. So now, what I want you to do is I want you to find the inverse. So again, we're going to switch the x and y. So what should I write? Good job. So you've switched the x's and y's around. Now, in order to get rid of the ln, just like the opposite of adding is to subtracting, or the opposite of squaring is square rooting, the opposite of ln is e. So what you're going to do is you're going to e both sides, meaning that's e to the x there and e here. On the left-hand side, you'll get e to the x. On the right-hand side, the e and the ln wipe each other away, which means what do you have left? y plus 3. Good. Again, your job is to get y by itself. So how would I finish? Subtract the 3. And I end up with e to the x minus 3 equals y. So when you are writing inverses of each other, when it comes to this stuff, if it's exponential, you rewrite it as log form. If it's in log form, you rewrite it as an exponential, what this, which this is. Because you have a, something with an exponent. Okay? Would you like me to do another one of the inverses? Yeah. Y equals 4 to the x. First step, switch your x and y. So x equals 4y. Second step, because it is exponential, rewrite it in log form. So log of what base is the base in this problem? 4. What was it equal to? x equals the exponent, which was? Y. Okay. Again, if it's something like this where it says y equals the ln of x minus 5. First step, switch the x and y around. When it says ln, you're going to get rid of ln by e. So you're going to e both sides. That gives me e to the x on the left. The e and the ln cancel each other out. And y minus 5 on the right. Now how do I get rid of the 5? So e to the x plus 5 equals y. Those are the inverses. What do you think? Not too bad. Okay. The last part that you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing some graphing. Now, when you're graphing these things, just so that you guys know, the parents of these, when it says y equals and it has log base b x, when b is greater than 1, the way these things get graphed is it's based off of a reflection or inverse. What happens is, is that if I were to draw this line right through here, okay, that's my reflection line, all right? Last week, do you guys remember when we did exponential growth and decay models? What was an exponential growth model? What did it look like? Hey, good job, Emma. Emma went like this, and she was drawing this with her hand and her pencil, something like that. What number did that cross through? So I crossed to the order pair of 0, 1, correct? Good job. That was exponential. Now I'm going to do log, which means 
I need to reflect that over that blue line that I just put. So when you reflect or you find the inverse, here's what really happens. If you have an x and a y, like I have 0 and 1, when you reflect it over that line, what happens is, is that those flip. So instead of being going through 0, 1, it's going to go through 1, 0. So instead of going through 0, 1, it's going to go through 1, 0. If you had more to the base, like if you knew what the base was, let's say the base is 2. If I put 1 in for x, what's 2, two to the first? What's 2 to the first power? 2. So that means I put 1 in for x and I got out 2 for y on the exponential growth model. For the log model, I'd switch them around. So instead of having 1, the order pair of 1, 2, like I would on the red line, I'd switch it over and have 2, 1 would go on my purple one. So over 2 on up 1 and I have a dot there. And I could keep going. How many dots do I really need? As many as I want, right? So this thing will ride alongside here and swing out that way. Just so that you guys know, it is very important to know this, that the log form or the log graph goes down forever. Eventually, you're going to be able to use your calculators to help you graph some of these. If it was log base 10, could you put that in there? Absolutely. Just so that you guys understand that, though, when you type a log in your calculator and you try to graph it, it doesn't look like it goes down forever. The only thought I could think of as to why it does not is the fact that <clears throat> these are functions, and if you have something that goes straight down forever, then that looks like it wouldn't pass the vertical line test, meaning it would not be a function. So that's my only thought process as to why. When you type log x into your y equals and hit graph, it looks like it starts in the middle of nowhere and then goes out the back side like mine does to the right. Okay? Just so that you guys know that. So this is graphing the inverse of it? This is graphing logs. And what we could do is, Nicole, is we could actually use the inverse of our exponential growth and decay in order to create these. We just flip them over. Okay? Now, to match that also, because not only did you have exponential growth, but you also had exponential decay, right? So if you have something like log base bx and you have 0 to 1, you had exponential decay. So there's my flip line. And which way was the decay model? For exponential decay, what, should it, what did it look like? Do you guys remember? Um, so right. It went downhill, right? I saw a couple of you guys actually drawing it with your hands. So now, if that's the exponential decay model that we're going to base this off of, now what I want you to do is take that red line the red curve, and I want you to flip it over the blue line. When you flip it over, you'll have your, your log form of this one. So again, just like last time, if it goes through 0, 1, then it should also go through what? Zero. 1, 0. Remember, it flips over. Yeah. So what would it look like if you flip it over? So if I were to take the iPad like this and I were to flip it over this way, would that match? Would what I've drawn so far match this part over here? Almost like, when, you know, remember when you're a little kid and you're asked to draw a bird in a painting? What'd you do? You did like this? Same kind of concept there, right? Would I just continue to keep going and would that mirror the image, the rest of the red? Yes. Okay. So when my base number is a fraction, 
or less than 1, something like that, but greater than 0, it should model this. Again, what we could do if we really wanted to, if you rewrote it as an exponential and put numbers in the curve and whatnot, then you just flip the x's and y's over to get the, the purple one. All right? So on your assignment for part of it, it's going to say just graph the function. It's not going to tell, ask you to tell me if it's growth or decay. It just says graph it. And really all it is is a mirror image of its counterpart, the exponential. Okay? What do you think? So if you look on page 314, the first section says, evaluate the logarithm using a calculator. So we're just using a calculator for those. You type it in, you tell me what it equals. Then 35 to 40 says simplify the expression. That's where things will cancel out, and you're left with whatever you have. 41 and 42 is tell me what they did wrong. 43 through 52 says find the inverse. That's where we switch the x's and y's and then solve for y. And then 55 to 60 says graph the function. So you're going to be asked to graph them. Are you guys okay? So on page 314... 315 we're 27 to 32 and we're 35 to 59 odds